Welcome back to What Arty Nibs with General Disturbance. This is the Sexton 1. It's the Tier 3 British Premium Tank, Premium SPG. And we're located on the north spawn of Abbey. And the tank is under the command of Talon 1958. Now it says Wrath of Heaven on the uh, side of the vehicle. And it's got a Union flag. And I know that the commander of this vehicle actually bears my actual name. So... Which is a very nice touch. Thank you, Talon. And battle has commenced. Well, 6 to 1, uh, as a premium vehicle, carries a 25 pounder gun. It's got very much the same characteristics as the Sexton 2, except it doesn't have those boxes on the back of the vehicle, and that's what distinguishes the two. Virtually all the other stats are the same. And that's an SU-18, a Tier 2 uh, Russian or Soviet uh, SPG. And this is a Tier 3 battle. Now, Talon's found his firing position. And he can look down the Abbey Road to see what's at the other end. And there's a T2 medium. So he's dialing in on that. That's a Tier 2 American light uh, medium tank, sorry. And he fires around him but just misses it. Now, normally Talon's very, very accurate with his shots. He lets them dial in very, very um, carefully. And as soon as they're fully dialed in, he lets loose. And normally he gets very good results. As I say, he's got a lot of ammo to play with. He's got 50 rounds of HE and 51 rounds of armor fizzing ammo. And he carries 10 rounds of pre uh, premium ammo as well. BT-7. Now, that's a tier 3 uh, Soviet light. Fires a round in. He did that one to clutch but I think it's because the Panzer 3 uh, the BT-7 was on the move this Panzer Jaeger is not on the move and I think he will carefully dial in to make sure it's an accurate shot and takes out this uh, Panzer Jaeger 1. Runs out oh he hits him he definitely hits him but that's an FTAC that's the French tank destroyer and he's trying to get that it's getting close to the village and in the village, we can see there's a light Viz 35. He's loaded. Rounds out. Direct hit. Wipes it out. That's his first kill. Now, there's a Type 91. That's a Japanese heavy. Dialing in. Make it absolutely certain we're in. And rounds out. Oh, good hit. Lovely hit there. 103 hit points. But I think he's a bit concerned because there's some enemy... Tanks, some heavies, uh, some enemy tanks actually made it to our gap area. And he's now preoccupied with making sure they don't get any further. T60 fires around in. It just goes behind the T60. There's a Cruiser 3 as well. That's a British uh, light tank. He's worried there's another uh, enemy tank there. And M2 Light has managed to make it up onto the heights. So he's fending off a lot of enemy tanks. Oh, this is dangerous. That round misses. He's firing them out as fast as he can. Oh, he took a round there. That came from the M2. And he fired that clutch. Um, he might want to think about retreating. He's taken another round from that M2 light. He needs to get away. And Yeah, I'd recommend going over the edge, actually. It's probably the smartest thing to do. He bounced another round from the M2. He's taking it gently. That's it. Got it. Right. Well, what he could do is he could take out that enemy tank at the other end. In fact, actually, it's the enemy RT. If he can get them, then his team can start capping. Dialing in the round. Out. And... Oh, he did hit the Texan. He did get him. Or at least he splashed him. Got 10 hit points of damage. He's ignoring the battle going on behind him. Because that seems to be going very well. This time around it's 63 hit points of damage. And he's tracked the Sexton. Almost loaded. Rounds out. And this time he kills him. Wipes him out. So that's his second kill. T1 HMC. Now that's a tier 2 American SPG. Rounds out. Lands near him. But I don't think we did any damage. There's a T-18 HMC, that's a tier 3 American SPG, and a little more dangerous because it's got a, a really good strong armour. We're dialing it in, rounds out, long flight time. And a direct hit, 94 hit points, great strike. 
That T-18 is now down to 16 hit points, 15% of his armor. And that one landed just behind him, splashed him, but didn't actually do any damage. Next shot should do it if he dials in fully, rounds out. Oh, it misses, that's RNG. That M2 light's not going to be able to penetrate. The armor's too tough. All he's doing is giving that T-18 a cool head in. He needs to get away and let the RT round do it. Oh, and the T-18 is taken out by RM2 light. And we are now capping. There is only one enemy left. It's the Cruiser 3, which is actually behind, behind Talon. He's already taken two rounds. He doesn't want to take any more. And the Cruiser has been taken out, which means they won the battle. So let's have a look at the end of battle results. And it's a third class tanker for Talon 1958 in the Sexton 1. He also picked up a Bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 10 and he got a Starks medal. He took down two of the enemy, um, received at least two hits, um, which could have lost him at least two thirds of his hit points in the process. And he survived to win the battle, which means that he's picked up a Starks medal and they're very difficult to get I have quite a few of them I can tell you but uh, quite often I thought that I got a Starks and I didn't because although I received two hits I didn't uh, suffer uh, the potential loss of two, thirty, two thirds of my hit points the win eight for that battle was 2686 which is very good indeed it's Unicum standard so let's have a look at the uh, team scores see where we came and he's top on damage for his team, 494 hit points. The highest scorer was actually the T60 on the enemy team. He managed to get 507 hit points of damage. That was the one who kept popping out, firing his gun and then popping back into cover again. Um, so that wasn't enough for a high caliber though, because he needed to get at least 1,000 hit points and 20% of the enemy um, uh, hit points in order to qualify for the high caliber. But uh, when it came to kills, uh, Talon was in second place, a joint second place with two kills. The highest score was the M2 Light, he managed four, and the Cruiser 3 managed four kills as well. When it came to base XP, it was the M2 Light again that got the highest score, 848, uh, followed by the L60, the Type 91, and lastly Talon with 355 base experience points. He fired 16 rounds during that battle. He got 6 direct hits, 6 penetration and 4 splash. Damage of 494 hit points all at more than 300 meters. He received 3 hits during the battle. 2 were penetrations. One was a non-penetration. One was from that uh, M2 light just as he was retreating over the cliff edge. Uh, and obviously it was the smart move to do to get away from them because they were just going to fill him full of holes and he wasn't going to survive very much longer. He blocked damage of 40 hit points during that shot. Uh, he damaged six of the enemy, killed two of them, and he also caused damage assistance of three hit points. On a premium account, he did 20,685 credits, and after ammunition, resupply, and repair, he still took away 18,682 credits. He received 532 XP, times two for the first victory of the day, and he picked up a bonus because this is a premium vehicle, one of only two premium vehicles that you can get in Wargaming at the moment in World of Tanks, and we do wish Wargaming would bring out more premium SPGs because they're needed as trainers. Uh, so he earned an extra 320 XP, bringing his total to 1,385 experience points altogether. But a very satisfactory battle, and he did exactly the right thing. Get away from the enemy as, uh, if there's a whole bunch of them, and they're all firing in, because he's not going to be able to stand up to them and trade shot for shot. They will do more damage to him, and they will find it easier to hit him, because he's actually quite big. So he needed to skedaddle out of there, and he did the right thing in doing so. So if you enjoyed this replay, please give it a like and do subscribe to our channel and hopefully it'll be your replay that I'll be featuring in the next video.